Okay guys, welcome back to Planet Moonshine, a channel where we use homesteading techniques in a professional microbrewery and ask the question, are we going to be able to sell this stuff? Let's find out, because today we're making whiskey! That's right, we're going to take our old beer and turn it into whiskey. It's part of our series on old beer to new spirits. Um, in the past we focused on gin, and now we're taking a look at whiskey, and I've got to say, I'm really looking forward to the outcome. Hi guys. Look what's just arrived. Yeah, <clears throat> that's right. Two five-liter real oak barrels. I've got to get these puppies prepared and then get some whiskey in them. Oh yeah. So the first job is to just give them a rinse out. So we just stick it under the tap, put some water in. All we're really trying to do is just to uh, get rid of any dust or wood shavings or debris that just happens to be inside. Okay, so these are both uh, rinsed out and the next job is to fit the taps. So we'll give them a quick rinse. And quite simply, drop them in the tap holes. Give them a little hand tighten. And now we need a mallet. So now, with a rubber mallet, let's give them a tap. And these are now ready to be filled. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow the instructions and we're going to fill them a third with cold water leave it a couple of hours, uh, another third with cold water, leave it a couple of hours, then right up to the top with cold water, put the bung in and we'll see uh, what leakage we get. And we just leave the water in there and keep topping it up until such time as that seeping stops. It should take anywhere between one and five days. Let's see. So here we are, we've got uh, enough water in here To fill these, about a third full each. And that's it. Now we've got to wait for the dripping to stop and uh, it's dripping already, so we'll see. So at the moment uh, we're doing a stripping run and uh, we've got about 35 litres of old beer in the still and we're just running it fast and hard to produce some more of this. 
uh, four liters of low wines at about 33 and a half percent and what we're going to be doing is uh, keeping collecting low wines until we've got enough to do a spirit run and uh, that'll be coming up soon so those two oak barrels I showed you a moment ago they are now um, a third full with cold water and uh, <laughs> already the leaking seems to have stopped it could be seeping very slowly but we're going to wait a couple of hours probably till the stripping run we're doing is finished and then we're going to put some more cold water in and uh, wait a bit longer now my goal with these is to fill both of these uh, with whiskey at about 50%, uh, maybe 55. I think I think I'm going to shoot for 55% alcohol by volume um, uh, to fill these two uh, wooden casks. Now um, I'm also going to put some uh, spirit in two jars, and we'll do some jar aging uh, as well, and uh, we'll do some tasting once those have uh, got a bit of time on them. But my plan with the uh, the two oak barrels is to keep them uh, in the wood untouched for as long as I can possibly manage. Um, if I'm lucky, six months uh, before I start uh, tapping them off. So uh, let's see how it goes. Okay guys, it's time for the spirit run. So uh, in front of me I have got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28 uh, litres of low lines and I've got just over two litres of faints here that's going in as well. So we're going in with just over 30 litres. I don't know what the ABV is yet because these are all slightly different so we'll take measurements in a minute. Um, those of you with a keen eye will see that this jar is looking a little bit murky and that's because I had a puke on one of my stripping run runs. Yeah, I was a bit of a lazy ass and I wasn't paying attention when uh, the, uh, the still started to boil and uh, it puked a little bit, but hey, it's only a stripping run, doesn't matter. The spirit's gonna come out clear and that's gonna be great. Okay, so um, just before filming this, I uh, stripped the still down completely and cleaned it. There was a lot of grunge in there from all of the stripping runs. So that's all been cleaned out. It's lovely. I've reassembled it, but I've only put two of the four bubble plates in. I'm going to try to hit about 90% ABV uh, as output from this uh, spirit run. Um, I'm going to run the still on a, probably about half power, but whatever I need to do to get to that 90%. Um, I left two plates in there uh, to give me a couple of extra distillations, which uh, if, I'm, if I guess correctly, these should average out at about 30% ABV once they're all in the still. And with the uh, vapor liquid equilibrium, the VLE lookup chart, that tells me that with three distillations, one at the uh, one inside the still, and two on the two bubble plates, that gives me three distillations, I should hit about 90. So that's my goal and we'll see if it works. All right, see you at the still guys. Okay guys, here we are at the still. Got the low wines ready, we're gonna chuck them in. I'm wearing some of them because oh, getting the lids off, some of these jars are so full I ended up covered. <laughs> A yucky one. Sludge and all.
who had the drain port open. So guys, it turns out an absolute idiot and I left the drain port open while I was filling. I think I lost about three litres, maybe four litres of low wines. And what I'm going to do now is just check what I've still got in the still and find out what the uh, alcohol is. So just bear with me for a sec. Yeah, a bit more. Okay, so on the upside, what we've got in the still is about 37%. So that's uh, helpful, but it would have been better if I'd had the full volume I wanted. What a fool, what a fool. <laughs> still, not the first time. Do you know what? It's probably not the last. Okay guys, so we're at the still. It's uh, coming up to temperature just about now. We're waiting for first drips to come off. It should be in the next couple of minutes. I've got all my jars ready. I've got my alcohol meter ready to put in the parrot. Temperature gauge. Notepad. Water bottle. My sampling straw. My sampling glass. So I think we're good to go. Okay guys, so I've uh, just turned the heat down on the still to about half power. Uh, it's now running at about uh, seven amps. It's normally around 14. Um, if I feel the still, I can feel the heat starting to rise. The, the sight glass is hot. I can see a few drips coming down from the first bubble plate. Above the first bubble plate, still fairly cool. So uh, it's getting there and uh, we're all ready to rock. Okay, so there you go. Look, temperature is climbing fast. So the condenser is running pretty strongly at the moment. Uh, the head temperature has settled in at around 78 degrees. And if I take a peek down inside the parrot, it's starting to fill with liquid. So let's just pop the hydrometer in there and get ready to collect our first drips. Okay, so here comes the hydrometer just starting to peep out the top. Got our collection jar ready. And here are the first drips. Smells like uh, acetone and meths. And we're coming off at about 90. It's a fairly steady stream. Head temperatures settled in at about 79. All right, guys, so, hmm, 
<laughs> it's been an absolutely crazy week for me. I've had no time to do anything. So I need to take some short cuts. And since this part of the video is about cuts, this is the big shortcut. I know everyone says, taste every jar, start in the middle, work your way up or down. But you know what? I haven't got time for that. So what we did was we collected off the still basically 15 jars. Uh, the first jar at 250 mils was clearly four shots. And the next two jars at 250 and 300 mils were definitely heads. So they're going in faints. Jar number four uh, was questionable. A little bit headsy, but not too bad. And after we got through hearts, uh, jar number 12 was a bit tailsy. Jar number 13, that tailsiness had gone. It was just back to fruitiness. Um, jar number 14 was a uh, hint of tails. And jar number 15 was straight up nasty tails. So what's our shortcut? Our shortcut is to discard jars one, two, and three into four shots and feints, and to uh, discard jar 15 straight into feints. Um, and we're gonna make uh, the, a blend of the rest. That'll be our hearts cut. And we're gonna make a tincture with the questionable jars. Jars number four and... <laughs> yeah, jars number four and number 12 and 13. Uh, <laughs> I did do that to camera, but you know, this is a story of not much time, cock-ups and shortcuts. Second cock-up, I didn't have the microphone turned on, <laughs> so there was no sound when I made the tincture. But let me tell you, the tincture that I made up was absolutely fine. In fact, I thought it tasted better than the hearts only. So there we go, because it added some character back in. Um, so fantastic. I've now made up uh, to uh, a full uh, blend. I included the questionable jars um, 4, 12, and 13. Uh, 14, I put aside. It was just too tailsy. Um, so now I ended up with 7.9 liters of uh, final spirit. Uh, that was at uh, what did it come out to at the end? 81.5% alcohol by volume. And to that we've added 4.2 litres of water to get us up to basically just around 12 litres at 54.5%. I'm really happy with that. The flavour, and here's a sample of it. Mmm, it smells great. I've got some uh, apples, pears and... I think raspberries. Yeah, there's definitely a sharper note there, like a, like a raspberry flavor. There's a graininess to it. Mm. In the mouth, it's definitely got that um, in the mid 50s uh, alcohol presence to it, but it's not aggressive, it's not prickly, it's not fighting me. It's very enjoyable, in fact, to drink, and I think I'll be drinking the rest of what's in here. And what I'm gonna do now is to uh, divide that lot. I'm gonna put two uh, full five liter uh, little barrels, these ones right here, and I'm gonna put the rest in jars with some wood, and if I've got any uh, white dog left over, it's gonna come home and I'm just gonna drink it. <laughs> So, um, those are my shortcuts, and you've seen the cock-ups. <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers.
Okay guys, so I've got some wood. <laughs> now, these two guys came from a company called Real Oak Barrels. I think they're in Bulgaria. So I'm guessing this is some kind of European oak, but don't ask me what. Um, this came from the same guys. And it is cherry wood. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one stick of this. This is about, I don't know, 15 centimeters long, one centimeter by one centimeter. So that's going in. Ka-chunk. That's completely untoasted and uncharred. But this one, These are oak staves. They've been charred and toasted uh, to a medium, uh, medium toast and a dark char. Not heavy though, not heavy. I mean, it's not like uh, crimpled up like something that's been burned in the fire. So one of those is going in as well. And we're gonna call that I'm going to call that done for the uh, for the jar aging. So I'll be dead interested to see how that comes out. This I'm looking to keep my hands off it until Christmas, which, uh, given that uh, we're in the middle of October now, a couple of months, I'm hoping that we will be uh, okay with this amount of oak in that amount of spirit at 54%. These two, I want to see if I can get them to at least six months, or at least one of them to six months, and perhaps one a little bit further. Uh, it just depends how patient I can be, and whether or not in the meantime somebody wants to buy it, and I test, test it and see how good it is. Uh, but I'm not letting them out until I feel these have got a little bit of age and a good bit of wood. So uh, yeah, quite exciting. <laughs> All right, cheers guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the content of this video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up, that really helps us at the channel. Um, drop a comment in, <laughs> have a laugh about my uh, little mistakes. <laughs> Tell me about any more you think that I've made. I, uh, you know, broad shoulders, dude, I can take it. Um, anyway, I'll probably just laugh it off if it's really critical. <laughs> but uh, let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, if you really enjoyed the, the content, you could subscribe and uh, you could ring the alarm bell so you get notified about my future videos. Uh, the next videos I'm gonna be doing, um, I've got to make some more gin. Uh, I've got the GNS, I just need to make the gin itself. I've gotta still perfect my citrus gin recipe as well, that's still not done. Um, so I'll be having some videos on that and uh, hopefully some blind tastings. And, oh geez, I've got work to do on picking bottles, picking closures, doing label design, <laughs> getting my license approved. Uh, it's a change of license. Um, so I've got a lot of work to do before I can actually sell any of this stuff. Uh, but you know, I'll take you along on the journey. Um, all right guys, keep on chilling. Keep on distilling. Peace out.